Welcome to the fifth video in our Discovery series with the Southwest German Chamber Orchestra. This time we're going to look at Holst's popular St. Paul's Suite for strings. At the beginning of the 20th century, Gustav Holst was one of the pioneers who strived after a distinct national English voice in music. Together with his great friend, Rafe Vaughan Williams, Holst was part of a movement involved in collecting English folk songs and dance tunes, both for their own sake and as a basis for original composition. Furthermore, English music of the Renaissance period and plain song were other strong influences in forging the way ahead. Holst's lifelong fascination with Sanskrit, Eastern culture and mysticism were also to play an important role in his own personal style. Gustavus Theodore von Holst was born in the small town of Cheltenham in West England of Latvian descent. He dropped the von during the First World War for fear of being thought a German. He was a rather frail child suffering from asthma and poor eyesight. He initially learned to play the violin and piano and composed from an early age. A nerve problem in his hand forced him to switch from the piano to the trombone whilst studying at the Royal College of Music in London. Playing in orchestras gave him great insight into how to write idiomatically for instruments, which stood him in good stead later on. As a young man, Holst earned a living not only as a trombonist, which he soon gave up, but also by conducting choirs and teaching, thus leaving him enough time to compose. He was a very enthusiastic, passionate teacher and in 1905 was appointed as Director of Music at the St. Paul's Girls' School in Hammersmith, London, a position which he held until his early death from a heart failure in 1934. Holst introduced the girls to the great masters, particularly the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, and was a very progressive educator for the times. He involved his pupils in choral and orchestral activities, as well as chamber music. Gussie, as the girls affectionately called him amongst themselves, demanded high standards, but was at the same time very caring and encouraging. The school showed its appreciation of their music director by building him a soundproof studio where he could compose in peace and quiet. Holst himself said he needed only two things to compose, silence and solitude. In this room he composed until the end of his life, including his famous masterpieces such as the huge orchestral suite The Planets and the Choral Symphony. Holst composed his St. Paul's Suite in 1913 for the String Orchestra at St. Paul's Girls' School to which it is also dedicated. It was originally simply titled Suite in C and has four movements. A typical performance lasts about 13 minutes. It was not published until 1922 by Goodwin and Tab as Opus 29 number two after Holst had made some revisions to the score. In addition, he also wrote optional wind and timpani parts for the expanded orchestra at school. It is, however, in the original version for strings that the piece has become well known. The first movement of the suite is a jig to be played vivace, quickly. A jig is a lively folk dance in triple time which originated in the British Isles becoming very popular in the 16th century. The first theme, centering on the note D, is in alternating 6-8 and 9-8 time and played in unison at the beginning of the movement.
A second tune is introduced by the second violins, later joined by the violas, this time centered on the note A. After some development of both melodies, they are combined at the climax of the movement. The second theme is now played in longer note values by the violas, cellos and bass. A quickening of the tempo brings the first movement to a breathless conclusion. Let's now hear it from beginning to end. The second movement is called ostinato, to be played very fast, presto. An ostinato is a short melodic phrase repeated over and over again. The movement opens with our ostinato played by the second violins, consordini, meaning with mutes on, giving a very hushed sound. The other instruments play a downward figure, pizzicato, with the strings plucked. The music is in C major, 3-4 time, and makes use of the so-called hemiola, meaning the implication of two strong beats within the framework of the three beats per bar. Instead of 1-2-3-1-2-3, it's 1-2-3-1-2-3.
Then a solo violin joins in with the main tune, lyrical and wistful. Let's listen from the beginning again. In the middle section of the movement, the ostinato shifts gear to 2-4 time. The busy second violins remain at the same speed, but now play staccato, short, in contrast to the smooth legato of the opening. Four time and the C major melody return to lead to a light footed conclusion. Here is the complete movement. Holst originally titled the third movement Dance, but later changed it to Intermezzo, meaning an intermediate movement. The first section is in 3-4 time and three bar groups. The tempo is Andante con moto, a slowish pace but with movement. A solo violin plays the main theme in a modal scale centered around the note A rather typical of English folk song. It is accompanied by the other strings all playing pizzicato. Holst's love of the Orient can be heard in the melodic shape of the dramatic outburst which follows. It soon dies down, however, and a solo viola plays a fragment of the main melody.
Then there is an abrupt change of tempo to vivace and a lively dance with shifting accents in a bright A major. The main theme from the opening section returns, followed again by the rhythmic dance, and the movement closes with the main melody, slower this time, played by four soloists, two violins, a viola, and a cello. Let's listen now to the whole intermezzo. The last movement is a finale and subtitled Dagason. Holst originally composed it as the finale of his second suite in F for military band in 1911. 
With only slight alterations, he adapted it for strings two years later and implanted it into the St. Paul Suite. Dargesson is an English folk tune from the late 16th century. It's a circular reel or jig, similar to the first movement, having no apparent end but always repeating itself. We hear it at the beginning, played by the first violins and then by the seconds, with a drone-like accompaniment. Holst ingeniously combines the Dargesson theme with one of Great Britain's most famous folk songs, Greensleeves. Here, first played by the cellos and later by the first violins. Greensleeves gives way to Dargesson again, only to reappear in great splendour later on, always accompanied by the never-ending Dargesson loop. As the music runs out of energy, a dialogue between a solo violin, a pizzicato double bass and a final loud chord brings the movement to a surprising end. Now let's hear the complete fourth movement of Holst's St. Paul's Suite.
We do hope you have enjoyed this video and Holst's wonderful music. Until the next discovery video, goodbye.